a niche technique, but one that's handy. It relies on the fact that these two algebraic forms simplify with trig. That turns into a cosine squared, and that turns into a secant squared. So I turn a sum into one term. Let's do an easy example to illustrate. I could just remember that, oh, this is the derivative of inverse sine, and be done. So not surprisingly, when I do this substitution, it's all going to be the same. Square root 1 minus sine squared is cosine, which cancels with the cosine, and inverse sine. For a more complicated example, let's look at this. One plus the square, that's the tangent. One plus tangent squared is secant squared. Which will cancel with one of the secant squareds from the differential. And then this integral is an awkward integral. You multiply by one cleverly. and substitute in the denominator. The differential becomes the numerator. <laughs> Substituting back for theta, I now need to get secant theta from my substitution. Uh, a nice way to do this is to use the triangle, just to get the relationships. X is tangent theta, so theta is my angle, X over 1 are my sides, and I fill in with the Pythagorean theorem for the hypotenuse. All right triangles are similar to the sine-cosine triangle. One over cosine, there's my secant. Ratio of the sides are the same, and I can substitute easily. For our last example, what if it's not a 1 plus, what if it's another number plus? You can always factor out a number over a sum. Multiply by 1, and multiply by 1. Now I can factor out the 5. And I'll put the 1 fifth inside the square. So I have the algebraic form that I'm looking for for the substitution. x over root 5 is tangent theta. Take the differential. One plus tangent squared is secant squared. <laughs> Inverse tangent to get theta. Another way to do the same thing, uh, actually this is the way I prefer, is when I look at the 5 plus x squared, I say, well, how about just 5 plus 5 tangent squared? Take a square root, and it's the same substitution with less horsing around. 